Hello everyone, back to you to our latest update for the United States. So we're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for uh, North America. And then we'll have a look at CFSB2 for the next four weeks, which will take us into the beginning of August. So uh, we're going to see what's going on uh, across America with weather uh, in uh, the next uh, couple of weeks and beyond. I'll, I'll get on that video sh very shortly. Just say that these are YouTube exclusive videos. We are taking enemies to gazweatherviz.com at the moment. So if you want to be notified when we are uh, releasing these videos on a Monday and a Thursday, uh, then uh, you'll need to subscribe to the channel and enable all notifications where you should be informed when the videos are released uh, by YouTube. Uh, so uh, also to say uh if you're enjoying the videos then please can you give us a like on the video and let us know in the comments uh what you think as well okay so we're going to start off with the uh, situation in the tropics so generally the tropical atlantic is uh, relatively quiet at the moment however across uh, north carolina we do have a disturbance area just here this red x there uh, just off the or on the coast of uh, of north carolina so that is uh, Disturbance uh, 1. There's a lot to read about this. So uh, this is as of 8 a.m. Uh, EDT, Thursday, July 9, 2020. Uh, National Hurricane Center are saying shell and thunderstorm activity has increased overnight in association with an area of low pressure located about 60 miles east of Wilmington, North Carolina. The thunderstorm activity is currently located well east and northeast of low center, but only a small Small increase in organization or a reformation uh, of the center of the thunderstorm activity could result in the formation of a tropical or subtropical cyclone later today or tonight. The low is expected to move northeastward to uh, north northeastward near or just offshore of the North Carolina outbanks later today and then along the mid Atlantic coast tonight and through Friday uh, night. Uh, regardless of development, the system is expected to produce locally heavy rainfall that could cause some flash flooding across portions of eastern North Carolina, the coastal mid-Atlantic and southern New England during the next few days. Gusty winds are also possible along the North Carolina outbanks today and along the mid-Atlantic and southern New England coast Friday and Saturday. Interest in these areas should monitor the progress of this system and refer to products from your local national weather service office and uh, an air force reserve hurricane hunter aircraft is scheduled to investigate this system later today it has an 80 percent chance very high 80 percent chance of becoming a uh, tropical cyclone uh, in the next uh, in the next two days and 80 percent chance in the next five days this could well become tropical storm fay Faye is next on our list of uh, named storms. So this could be Tropical Storm Faye running up the eastern seaboard of the United States over the next two or three days, bringing uh, gusty winds, torrential rain and thunderstorms and, uh, and some pretty wild weather up the east coast. So all eyes will be on whether this does indeed become Tropical Storm Faye uh, in the next day or so. This is how things are currently looking in terms of the upper level winds uh, across the tropical Atlantic. So uh, we are beginning to draw out the air from uh, Africa again, from Sahara and Africa. You remember in Monday's video, I said that we have reduced the uh, easterly flow out of Sahara and Africa. That brings dust and sand, of course, out of uh, out of Africa and has an inhibiting effect on the uh, on thunderstorm development in the tropical Atlantic. And all of these storms uh, begin their genesis as clusters of thunderstorms, uh, and then, of course, they uh, develop rotation. And they pick up energy as they move across the hot waters of the tropical Atlantic. And uh, it's that uh, development then that develops into areas of low pressure and then uh, tropical storms and then hurricanes. And then you go up the scale of hurricanes. But they all begin their, their genesis as, uh, as clusters of thunderstorms. If you bring lots of sand and dust out of Sahara and Africa, then that has an inhibiting impact uh, on the development of those thunderstorms. So you can see that we are, we expect to be bringing easterly trade winds through the tropical uh, Atlantic. So that's not uh, unusual at all that we have the wind direction coming in from the east but uh, we are drawing those easterlies 
in from, uh, you know, from Africa itself, not just off the coast of Africa, but in from uh, Africa itself, and that will be uh, pulling more dust and sand out of uh, Saharan Africa. We can actually show, I can actually show the particulars uh, in the upper atmosphere. So let's just flip that over, shall we? So we need to look at particulates just there. Uh, and I'll get rid of that. Okay, so that's gone, and that's gone too. And you can see, so this is showing like, like, well, what's happening uh, in terms of uh, how much particulates there are in the upper atmosphere. You can see all of this yellowy stuff here. That's like the dust that's being brought out of Southern Africa. And you see how that is moving into uh, or uh, above the tropical Atlantic in the uh, upper atmosphere. We don't have that much over here towards the Caribbean, Gulf of uh, uh, Gulf of Mexico, that sort of area. So, so there's nothing really there to stop uh, development uh, if we start getting thunderstorms and low pressure systems developing around here. Uh, nothing, nothing there to, to stop um, development. But over here towards like uh, the Cabo Verde Islands, where a lot of these thunderstorms um, begin. Uh, so just there, for example. Uh, so, so in that area, we have got a lot of dust still. And sand. So at the moment, I wouldn't expect any development in this area. Uh, let's get rid of all that. So at the moment, I wouldn't expect much development in this sort of area. But but there's nothing to stop development in this uh, area just here, right? exactly where we've got um, what may become tropical storm Fay. Let's just very quickly move that over back to air. Uh, and get rid of that again. So we can actually zoom in. Let's pull this round a little bit and then start to zoom in. So we can actually zoom in on uh, on where this uh, system is just around North Carolina. Let's go in a little bit further. Uh, really marvellous what you can do with uh, with this at earthnoldschool.net. I'll leave a link with the description. Do uh, do check out this website. So there is uh, is the area of low pressure just on the North Carolina coast uh, around here. You can see that the strongest winds with this low pressure are on the uh, on the eastern side of below through here. Uh, and then winds are going around uh, a little bit like that. So this low is going to move up the east coast, taking heavy showers of thunderstorms with it. May develop, uh, may pick up energy because remember the waters around here in the Atlantic are going to be very, very warm. Uh, so, so the the waters will help development of this system, uh, and then it will trundle its way up the east coast by the look of it over the next two or three days, taking lots and lots of heavy showers and thunderstorms and torrential rain and pretty gusty winds uh, with it too. So so all eyes will be on that low pressure tea, whether it does in fact become tropical storm at Fay in the next uh, in the next day or so. Uh, these are the 500 bit of our high dominant flow charts for the next week to 10 days from the Penn State University. We've got the ECFWF on the left of the screen as you're looking at it and the GFS is over on the right of the screen as you are looking at it, side by side. Uh, and uh, the big story, I think, once we get rid of this storm off the east coast, it's low pressure. It's going to be, it's going to be heat next week. Going to get very, very hot across many parts of America uh, next week. The heat really will be on uh, next week. So uh, we're going to have this area of high pressure, this ridge developing or sort of reforming, as it's been there quite a bit over the past couple of weeks. But the ridge will reform across eastern parts of America and in the northeast. And that will start to draw up the air from the south again. And it is going to get really, really hot. The start of that is going to be in the southwest. So like Texas, Arizona, uh, over to California, those sort of areas. That's where the heat's going to start. And then it's going to spread northwards and eastwards across the states uh, next week. And see that the jet stream is going to be pushed northwards. Jet stream is going up towards the Canadian border. And uh, all, nearly all parts of America are going to, be, going to be on the hot side of the jet with these southerly winds surging and heat surging northwards. The uh, GFS, so that's the ECM. The uh, GFS is very similar to identical. Again, we've got this ridge in the east of the northeast. The jet stream, again, is going to be pushed a long way north up towards Canada. And that's going to allow very, very hot air to surge from the south and uh, from the southwest too through the course of the next week and in the 7 to 10 day time frame. 
these are the uh, GFS upper air temperature amplification ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're in Dallas in Texas today. And look how hot things are going to be getting down. Of course, it's a very, very hot place anyway at this time of the year. So, so the average temperature, which is the red line uh, for Dallas at this time of year, is hovering around 20 degrees at 850 HPA. Uh, so, so that's really hot anyway. But we're already above average uh, with the upper air temperatures. And they're going to surge over the next week. You're going to between around 25 and 30 degrees at 850 HPA. So that's in the upper atmosphere. Down on the surface, that probably those temperatures to around... I wouldn't be surprised if it gets a temperature around 40 degrees uh, in Dallas. So 40 degrees, that's for us here in the UK and in Europe where we look at centigrade. For your view in America, uh, 40 degrees is going to be around 104 Fahrenheit, something like that. So, so it really is going to get intensely hot. I mean, at the moment, temperature is probably around mid 90s Fahrenheit, but I think we'll see the temperature going into the hundreds Fahrenheit uh, next week for Dallas. Then the temperature drops away. I say drops away; it'll still be very, very hot, but sort of falls back into the 90s Fahrenheit as the heat sort of surges then northwards and eastwards across the rest of America. So, so where this heat is building here then that will sort of spread out north and was across the states turn things intensely hot through many parts of America and at the same time the temperature fall like Texas and most of the areas will drop back closer to average of course very very dry at this time of year as you would expect so the next sort of week to 10 days are going to be completely dry really uh, for Dallas and then after that we might get some thunderstorms going as the temperature begins to lower a little bit but, uh, but to be honest that looks pretty dry for the next couple of weeks, I think. Temperature anomalies uh, for the night to the 17th of July for states looking like this. So, uh, when well, you see where heat is building uh, over the next few days in this southwestern corner, so from uh, so from Texas to California, all of the states in between, really, really hot. It's cooler up in the northwest, as it always is, or nearly always is, cooler there with the wind coming in off the uh, blessed Pacific Ocean. Southern parts of America and the southeast, generally warm and average, up the eastern seaboard, generally warm and average there, and in the northeast, from like the Midwest going up towards the Canadian border. It's a little bit cooler there just for the next few days, but I think we will see the heat surging there uh, later next week. This doesn't go far enough out to be able to pick up on the heat heat wave that's going to spread out of this south and southwestern corner in that direction. The uh, rainfall anomaly is looking like this. So most parts of the states are going to be dry, uh, dry on average in the week ahead, which interestingly does, this is from the 9th, 17th of July, interesting that does include many of these eastern uh, coastal states where we have at the moment got that area of low pressure but in the northeast wetter than average up there so so you can see that once the storm so so the low pressure that could become tr tr a tropical storm phase around here at the moment uh, so that's going to push northeast it's going to bring lots of heavy rain like to the northeast and then over towards the Great Lakes and that sort of area behind that it looks like you're going to get a lot drier in uh, in the southeast corner so it goes dry on average in the southeast all of the west and most of the south are uh, significantly dry on average too. So what rainfall there is uh, mainly is going to be like in the far north and northeast uh, around here. Um, it's, that's going to be primarily down to like this system that's currently sitting over uh, North Carolina, off the coast of North Carolina. Okay, so let's see what's going to happen then in the next couple of weeks. This is the latest GFS or the 6Z uh, GFS. So uh, let's concentrate on the low pressure. It could become tropical storm phase first of all that's where below is just there uh, otherwise we've got very slack gradients across many parts of america there is a low pressure up towards canada around here but uh, generally it's uh, it's quite a slack sort of scene across the states into tomorrow that low pressure starts to move northwards up the east coast so that's going to take uh heavy showers torrential rain and thunderstorms with it uh there's the precipitation uh forecast uh, showing that there is some torrential rain just here like just off the mid-atlantic uh coast and still some heavy showers left behind it down this east coast too i uh, also got some pretty heavy showers and thunderstorms through uh the midwest and going out uh, uh 
uh, towards there. So that's um, kind of like Kentucky, that sort of area, I think. And then out of further west, though, it goes mostly dry, as you would expect at this time of the year. Now, by the time we get through to the end of Friday, this low pressure is moving further northward, so it's moving up towards New England and that sort of area. And pressure is just generally lower. Pressure is just generally lowering in the northeast, bringing heavy showers and possibly uh, thunderstorms to the northeast as well. There's a precipitation forecast, so we've got lots of heavy showers and thunderstorms uh, sort of in the east of the Midwest around the Great Lakes, going southwards. Then we've got this torrential rain just here, uh, possibly affecting uh, like somewhere like New, uh, New York, for example. Could be some big rains through there. Heavy showers generally on the eastern side. Heavy showers and thunderstorms and instability generally on the eastern side of America. Most central western states looking dry and you would have thought mainly hot. Saturday, again, low pressures in the northeast, bringing heavy showers and thunderstorms through New England. And, uh, and of course, that's all a legacy of what may become Tropical Storm Fay. Further west and southwest, the heat is beginning to build now, beginning to build in this southwestern corner and through these southern states. Again, lots of heavy showers and thunderstorms on the eastern side of America, particularly in this northeastern corner on Saturday. But most central west areas, again, looking uh, mostly dry and really hot and then that's how you have to pay attention to look for Sunday uh, for example so it is cooling down a little bit in the northeast it is cooling down a little bit in the far north and northeast but at the same time the heat is building in the south and southwest from Texas over towards California heat really building uh, through there this is Monday so still if it's trough in the northeast that will still bring uh, refreshing rains heavy showers and thunderstorms too much of the northeast from from the Great Lakes through to North, uh, New England there will be further heavy showers and uh, thunderstorms uh, through there into the early part of next week. And then as next week progresses, we see this low pressure, which just does hang around right until uh, to, to Tuesday. This low pressure gradually starting to drift northwards and eastwards. And as it begins to pull away northwards and eastwards, you'll start to take those cooler temperatures with it. So you see the upper air temperatures by Tuesday show that the cooler uh, upper air temperatures are sort of shifting towards the northeast. And this heat in the south and southwest is starting to push northwards and eastwards too. So as we go into the second half of next week, I think the emphasis will increasingly shift towards hot, hot weather through many parts of the states. Then we'll start getting the ridge building across much of the east, uh, where we have had these heavy showers and thunderstorms through the middle and second half of next week. This ridge builds towards the east and the northeast, and that starts to pull those very hot temperatures back up from the southwest. So these are our upper air temperatures across America on Thursday, a week today. Notice most parts of the states looking really, really hot from the west coast, Pacific coast, all the way over to the Atlantic coast. Very hot upper air temperatures, a real heat wave will get going through the middle and second half of next week by the look of it. Still some low pressure, some slightly cooler air up towards the Canadian border, but most parts of the states are looking baking hot uh, as we go in towards day 10. So this is day 10, certainly the 19th of July. Really hot uh, upper air temperatures. The heat is surging from the southwest and it's heading up towards the Great Lakes as well, in towards the Midwest. Uh, so it is short of Great Lakes actually, but it's heading in towards the Midwest. And it just looks like a very, very hot scene across all parts of America by the time we get through to uh, to day 10. Even in this far northwestern corner where it's normally quite cool, even there, away from the Pacific coast anyway, it looks pretty hot. In the more extended range with this GFS run, generally staying hot really. Heat wave conditions continuing into the second half of July. Again, there's our upper air temperatures. Those, in those intensely hot upper air temperatures have in fact by this point made their way towards the Great Lakes. So, so going a long way east with those very very hot upper air temperatures so uh, yeah i think we're going to see temperatures like in, uh, in 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 around day 10 and beyond going widely into the 90s fahrenheit at least even in northern parts of america uh, widely some areas will reach the hundreds fahrenheit i think so it's going to be a very very hot uh, a couple of weeks once we get this storm uh, out of the way and it's a it's a tendon heavy showers and thunderstorms uh, that's how the ECM is looking for tomorrow. So again, this is the system that may get named as Tropical Storm Fay uh, just here around uh, around um, uh, North Carolina, around the Carolinas. That's going to drift up the East Coast. There it goes, drifting, drifting up the East Coast over the next couple of days. Generally bringing lots of heavy showers and thunderstorms to this northeastern corner. Out in the west, the heat will be building 
in the south and the southwest. And then, you see, with the upper air temperatures so hot in the west and in the southwest, but a little bit cooler with this low pressure uh, over in the uh, far northeast. But as we go through next week, we'll lose the influence of that low pressure. And then the hot air is going to surge north. So this is Thursday with the upper air temperatures. Seeing those very, very hot upper air temperatures surging north. But 25 Celsius ice. I don't know how unusual this is for America, but the 25 Celsius isotherm there on Thursday is more or less getting in towards the northeast. That is incredibly hot air surging northwards. Uh, that, I would assume, does lift temperatures into the 100s Fahrenheit, even in the northeast part of America. So intensely hot through most of the states into the second half of next week. And these hot conditions look set to continue, continue with the Euro right the way up to uh, day 10. That's how it looks for Sunday the 19th of July. Really hot again with those upper air temperatures from the west coast all the way to the east coast. So, so yes, once this storm is out of the way, the, uh, the emphasis will shift from, like, like heavy showers, long spells, rain, and thunderstorms, to uh, intense heat across most parts of America by the look of it. Finally, the CFS V2, so these are 500 below our heights, broken down into uh, week periods. The first week period takes from the 9th to the 15th of July. The coming week has this ridge building in the northeast and low pressures out to the northwest. This causes uh, hot air to surge up from the south. Very similar for week two as well, which is the 19th to 22nd of July. Again, the ridges in the east and the northeast, hot air surging northwards across most parts of America there. Week three is going to be the 23rd to 29th of July. Then we have a ridge extending through most parts of the states. Jet streams should be going northwards as well, uh, or should be north. So, so generally, I think we're looking at another, uh, another pretty hot week there. Possibly signs of a change in week four. This is 30th of July to the 5th of August. After this very hot July, we possibly find the ridge backing out towards the northwest, which could start to cause a trough to dig southwards, a trough of low pressure, and a dip in the jet stream to move southwards through the north and the east of the states. Again, that's a bit speculative, but if the ridge is in the northwest, you'd expect the jet stream with the trough to start to dig southwards through the north and the east of America. That will possibly bring a drop in the temperature and some uh, cooler weather as well as we, move, as we end July and head into August. Uh, temperature anomalies for the coming week, the 9th to the 15th of July, cool in the northwest. Otherwise, most parts of the state's looking really, really hot uh, with the temperature anomaly. And that goes on into week two as well, the 16th to 22nd of July. Look how hot it is in this northeastern corner, over three degrees above average. And generally, for most eastern and uh, central eastern northeast parts of the state, it's very, very hot. Out in the northwest, it is a little bit cooler. Week three, uh, which is the 23rd to 9th of July. Generally very warm through this week, but not as hot in the east and the northeast. And then, yes, a change for week four, as I expected. This is the 30th of July to 5th of August. Then it started to go cooler than average in the north and in the northeast and the east. And it's getting hotter in the west and particularly the northwest. Rainfall anomalies are finally. So, uh, again, we see where we've got the, uh, this low pressure could become this name storm around here, west average through there. Most other parts of the state is looking pretty dry in the week ahead. Week two is the 16th, 22nd of July. Again, most parts of the states are dry, except in the very, very far north, where it is a little bit uh, wetter. Week three, uh, just generally weaker signals uh, for week three. 23rd, 29th of July, looks a little bit wet on the eastern side, otherwise probably hints at being rather dry still again. And then uh, week four, 30th of July, 5th of August, possibly going a bit more unsettled through these Midwestern and some Eastern states. Uh, through them. So there's a lot to keep an eye on for America over the next uh, couple of weeks. So initially, it's this low pressure around uh, around the Carolinas, around North Carolina. It's going to trundle up the East Coast through the Mid Atlantic uh, coast and then up towards New England. Uh, it might become a uh, tropical storm, Fay. So I'm um, to bring lots of heavy showers and thunderstorms and trench rain to the far east and the northeast uh, in the next two, three, four days. 
Next week, we lose the influence of that low pressure. It will take a while, so it will still be refreshing rains in the northeast. should be early part of next week, but eventually we're going to lose that low. And uh, then the emphasis and the storyline will shift to heat, and it looks like most of America will be engulfed in a very, very intense heat wave through the middle and the second half of next week. And then on to day 10 and possibly beyond, we could see some extreme heat surging northwards across many parts of America. America in what is going to be, uh, what looks like going to be a, a really hot July for most parts of the states. Okay, so we'll do it over again on uh, Monday and bring you up to date then uh, with weather for America. If you enjoyed this video, then please give us a like, let us know in the comments what you think. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we'll have our next uh, forecast for America uh, on Monday. That's all for now though and thanks for watching.